It felt like a very quick movie in some ways. He burst in, and what I remember was the screams. It was just really loud. It was strange that it was cold that day. It was snowing. I was late to class. I was rushing out the door. I walked into the classroom. I'd sit right by the wall that would take you into the hallway. So I heard the shots. I always describe it as an ax being taken to a piece of wood. Everyone's looking up. You're starting to kind of wonder, you know, what is that sound? My secretary came to me and said, sorry to interrupt, but there was some shooting at the residences, and that's why the sirens are coming. And then the sirens became louder and louder and louder and more and more and more. Then I called Jocelyn, and there was no answer. Because I was sitting on the wall right by the, the hallway, I could feel just it, moving closer and closer. And my professor here in the hallway, and as she came back, I mean, just the look on her face kind of signaled to me that something wasn't right. I got under my desk, and I put my feet under the chair, my stomach on the seat, not really knowing what I was preparing for, but just making myself smaller. And pretty quickly, I, I was shot. I knew I was in pain, and I knew it wasn't good. I didn't know if it was a gunman. That wasn't my concern. I think my concern was just, why isn't this ending? When is it going to end? What is going on? While at the same time, you're trying to grasp with, am I going to survive? The doorway that we went through was a long hallway to get down to the classrooms where the shootings actually happened. My memory was just silence. By the time we had entered, the last shot had been fired. So when I went into the first classroom, uh, my initial thought was, how could one person do all this? I remember the police broke in very aggressively. Then someone came over to me and he looked down and he said yellow and then he switched it to red, which means uh, he was calling like a triage code. And so if you're yellow, it means you're injured, but red is very critically injured. And I was picked up and carried out by, by several people. I think I knew subconsciously that, you know, they were, that I owed my life to them and that whatever had happened, they were rescuing us from this place. And I didn't know if there was still a threat or what was happening, but that their brave actions in some way stopped the, the shooting and was gonna allow me to, to survive. Our officers and Blacksburg officers did an admirable job of going into that building and, and taking care of the wounded. It was a horrible tragedy. It's just so hard to describe. It was just it was shock. But you still have a job to do. The first time I went to visit, my knees were very soft when I was walking up there, but the, 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 the police who escorted me were very gentle. And so I knew the space, the spot where, where Jocelyn was killed. The first months back in college, they were really hard. It was the first time I saw everyone. And so it was, how's your summer? And how's this crazy thing that happened to you? And everyone deals with things differently. And so it was a lot of figuring out how much of, of my story do I make this? Do I bring it up? Will they bring it up? How do you navigate those things? 
I think about April 16th every day. Those thoughts and those images that stay with you, they come in the quiet times uh, when you're alone. I think the biggest thing that has helped is the support from the community and the university community. It's been unwavering. We have this cultural tendency to think that after six months, nine months, whatever number you want to give to yourself, that you should have moved on. The one great thing about our community was that we had memorial services. We had different opportunities to be together and, and to grieve. And so there wasn't a sense from my campus or my friends that one should move on. But initially and, and intrinsically, you know, life resumes to being a junior in college. For so long, this event was was the defining part of my life, and that's what everyone kind of knew me as. But as I've done more in school safety and violence prevention, I feel like I still actively work to, as I kind of say, not be known as the girl who got shot. You don't want to be known purely for April 16th. You also want to be known for taking that memory forward. I started organizing a group of colleagues and friends and volunteers who will discuss about reutilizing the space. I said, well, we should be transform the space into the Center for Peace Studies and Violence Prevention. Christina has always been, to me, symbolic. Symbolic in the sense of transforming the space or, or looking differently at the space and also transforming people's attitudes. That's her. That's her passion. I kind of think about myself as this bridge of trying to help understand why um, a teacher or a student or someone who doesn't normally think about safety and security, why they should care about this. And the biggest emphasis is on prevention. being kind, reaching out to people and saying, you know, we care about you, you know, let's make sure you're as, as successful as possible in this environment. That's the best safety, security, prevention that you can have, is people watching out for each other. When I start a presentation, I hope that when I walk in that room, they see a survivor. I hope that they see someone who's been able to turn an event and add value to it and not only be seen as you know, a victim or someone who went through this, you know, this terrible event, but someone who's been more thoughtful in her approach and been able to turn that for a more positive 